TraceRoute is intended to provide network testing, measurement, and management. It prints the route that IP packets take to a network host. It does this by sending a UDP probe packet with a small maximum time to live, or max TTL, and then listens for an ICMP time exceeded response from the routers and the gateways along the path to the target system. Probes start with a maximum TTL of one hop and then increases the count by one for each successive probe. The idea is that the target system will eventually be located as well as each device along the way. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. I always start with doing any tool targeting my own loopback uh, address. The reason why is then I know that trace route or whatever tool is actually working. In this case we see that there's one hop basically it goes from my machine to the loopback in one step. We can target another server and in this case we're going to do example.com and we'll see that there are multiple hops basically every system along the way will give a response and in this case we had 14 responses. Actually that's not entirely true. Hop number two indicates that there is uh, no either address to name translation for that particular node or that there is a software in, uh, incompatibility problem. And typically what that means is that the second route or the second hop, excuse me, is actually that one that's identified by number three. So really there's 13 devices between myself and the target system, including those. Uh, in this way we have an idea of what systems are touched along the way and it also gives us an idea of when the target server, where his network begins. Let's see some of the different uh, flags that we can use. We're going to use the dash n flag, which tells Traceroute to list all of the IP addresses in numerical order. This allows us to do some scripting. It makes things a little bit easier to identify those systems along the way without having to deal with all the other uh, detailed information regarding the actual system's name. The default UDP port that is used during traceroute is port 33434. If we want to change that to see what kind of results we get that are different, we can use the dash P flag. If you remember there were 14 hops and one of them was bogus, but when we do the dash P and we designate a different UDP port, the systems along the way may have some problems with that. As you'll notice, hop number two had the exact same problem as before, but hops 14 through 30 obviously had some serious problems. The reason why it stopped at 30 is if we scroll back up, we'll notice that the maximum hops sent are 30. In this case, we don't necessarily want to change up our UDP port numbers just randomly. There has to be a reason behind that. But that gives you a basic idea of how Traceroute can work and gives you an idea of how a system can handle uh, different modifications of the Traceroute packets. In this case, with our modified UDP port, you'll notice that the last system was the system located in Los Angeles, which indicates for me that whatever is past that is probably within the network of example.com, especially since our previous results showed that there, were, uh, there was connectivity to the server itself. If we use Traceroute within our virtual network, 
and we target one of our live CDs. In this case, we're going to use the Hackerdemia disk, which is located at 192.168.1.123. We'll see that the hops, there's only one hop. Basically, goes from our system to the, the Hackerdemia disk. This is what you'll see in a virtual network, and, and it's not unusual. Uh, therefore, Traceroute doesn't really have any real benefit in a virtual network. Uh, it's typically only used in real networks and across the internet. Traceroute may not seem like a hacker tool, but it is something that we definitely use in the industry to identify systems along the way and also identify systems within the target network. Often our scope involves not just a system, but systems within a particular network. And we want to be able to identify where the customer premise equipment begins and where their uh, internet service provider systems are and not hack the wrong systems.